Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, the nearly 90 minute preview stream just wrapped up ahead of season four for Diablo 4, coming in uh, just under a couple of weeks from now. And well, of course, we have known for quite a while about a lot of the major changes coming to the game. The big things that this stream was told to have for us are the season theme itself, which we didn't know about beforehand, and then any changes that have been made based on player feedback from the PTR, which of course would result in differences between the tested version and what will be hitting the live servers. First and foremost, then let's talk about the seasonal theme because this is by far going to be the biggest conversation piece at least until the season actually releases and people have their hands on it. The season is going to be called Loot Reborn, which seems a bit on the nose but also makes it the only season name we've had so far based around the changes made to the game rather than the actual season theme itself. That is until you realize that the changes to the game are the season theme. Because there is some season only stuff going on, sure, but there's no like season specific powers like in previous seasons, which honestly is a bit disappointing. We'll talk more about my own thoughts and opinions about this in another video. This is more just to report on what is happening for all of you in a nice condensed manner. Essentially what they're doing is using the redone loot system and the massive changes to Helltide as the basis for this whole season, even though that will be an internal realm feature as well. Before moving on to the seasonal bit specifically, we should also talk about changes made to Helltide since PTR, which are essentially just changes to drop rates in various ways. Infernal Cinders will drop far more, Baneful Hearts will drop more and more consistently, and then Blood Maidens, the big altar bosses, now just drop far more loot in general, including summoning materials for Lord Zeer, and a percentage chance at summoning materials for various different endgame bosses too. One final relatively notable change, Helltide chests now take half of the channel time to open, one and a half seconds down from three. The seasonal part then, the part that won't be returning in the future, will be an iron Iron Wolves reputation system and extra events based around the Iron Wolves in Helltide, and the new Call of the Wolves seasonal activity that all that is contained within because it's essentially just a name for the quest line and reputation system that is tied to the Iron Wolves and specifically Helltide itself. So essentially we're just taking the stuff that they changed as a permanent feature for the game and making it the seasonal mechanic. The reputation track theoretically does though contain items that are quote unquote super juiced and intended to make you feel overpowered with every item that you get along the track through your journey. and the point to which you get it, including even a resplendent spark at the end here for creating uber uniques of your own choice, which is pretty nice. Then there is also the new sort of activity, which is a consumable called the Profane Mind Cage. This raises the level of monsters in your Helltide for its full duration by 10, and also raises the cinder drop rate during this effect, as well as increasing your threat meter gain too. These also stack with one another if you have multiple, so theoretically the goal of this is to let you sort of tailor the difficulty of Helltide to your own character and the resulting wards that you get too. Then we have some some boss ladder specific changes, most notably that all uber bosses now have a decent chance of dropping uber uniques. It was relayed to us as being slightly lower than Duriel and Andariel, but that means now all of the uber bosses now have a chance, a proper chance for uber uniques to drop from them. As well, the tormented bosses, which is the secondary super high end tier of the boss ladder, now cost three times the summon materials instead of the five times that was originally tested in the PTR. Then we come to a lot more other changes that were made through the PTR and from the feedback that they got from this and the the first major one, honestly probably the biggest major one, is that masterworking as an upgrade process no longer has any type of failure chance. The higher tier upgrades will now cost more materials and you can still reset them if you don't get the rolls you want the first time, but now they just don't have a high failure rate on any higher tier upgrades, there's no failure rates at all, essentially trading a bit of the RNG that was in the mechanic for a bit of guaranteed farmability. On top of this, they've reduced the veiled crystal cost both here and in multiple other places massively, including making legendaries now cost 16 veiled crystals to apply instead of 75 as a basis as they were before. They've also added more ways to convert the materials from the pit to make early materials less tedious to collect in high quantity. And then we also have changes to tempering, including a button to skip the animation, a screen to show the results after you temper. And they also specifically specified that the current tempering manuals are intended as a base for the system with room to add loads more manuals with much more interesting affixes over time. They also changed greater affixes just a little bit, adding a new symbol both on drop and in inventory to differentiate between between them better. Past this, the main other change mentioned was that the Veiled Crystals should just be far more plentiful to actually drop, with Sacred Items now salvaging for twice as many materials as base items, and Ancestrals now salvaging for three times as much. Then we also have changes to both Nightmare Dungeons and the Artificer's Pit, which now both drop scaling amounts of obols at higher tiers, which is important, especially now, as a different change that was made is the Gambling Vendor in Towns will now always give you 925 item power items if you are level 100. 
200, which is absolutely massive. Another giant change here to the game between PTR and now specifically, which wasn't even actually really based on player feedback itself, but this is a change being made so that the devs can just in future balance the deeper, harder, and more challenging end game things more precisely, which is now armor will no longer do anything for you past 9,230, the proper cap now. This is the amount that gives you 85% damage reduction, its maximum, from level 100 enemies. From season four forward, anything higher than 9,230 is a waste of armor. That is a genuine factual cap, simple as that from this point forward. Past that, just a few balance changes being made from around the PTR as well. Much more general things such as various tempering affixes being moved around to different manuals or having their own statistical values changed and larger caps being added to certain stats too so that balancing can be a bit more under control. Such as area size for abilities being capped at bonus 100% or cooldown reduction now being capped at 75%, which is honestly an extremely high place for the cap to even be, so capping it there feels absolutely fair. As well as that, just a number of changes to make performance a bit smoother on some of the more sillier results of the new systems too, while also increasing power in return where necessary to sort of just even it out. Then just one more slight thing that we will see more of when we get the full picture on season release, but the season journey has been adjusted to sort of give each class a full strong build by level 100. The idea being that they are giving you specific high value versions of affixes with synergy along your path, pushing you towards a certain playstyle to begin the season as for each class, which is definitely quite an interesting concept for them to do, but we'll sort of have to see how that plays out before we can talk about it properly. And that's pretty much it for today then everyone, honestly not quite as much to reveal as I was expecting to see, but that is also partially a byproduct of us having the PTR we did a month in advance, as clearly the majority of the time spent on the season was on the base mechanical changes rather than just seasonal stuff itself. And while I definitely can respect that as a concept, it just seems like something we could have not been having a mystery up until this point if that was the case. But hey, everyone will have their own opinions about it, and of course I'll share more of my own in a follow-up video tomorrow. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye